Netflix, a company worth over $100 billion with over 220 million active users. That is a lot of responsibility for Netflix, not only when it comes to dealing with 220 million records of personal information, but also making sure that relevant people have access to that information and others do not. Mm -hmm. When Netflix was first founded in 1997, formerly known as Kibble, the company appeared to be a little more than just an upstart DVD rental business. Fast forward two decades and Netflix has become one of the biggest TV and movie studios in the world, with more subscribers than all cable TV channels in America combined. As a company grows, it directly inherits the responsibility it has on its hands, and Netflix had to really work hard to make it all work, with every user joining their platform, authenticating a user, or in other words, confirming their identity and creating an account, security was becoming a very important focus. As Netflix started growing and expanding around the world, protecting a user's identity was not the only focus anymore. Authorization of every user was increasingly a driving factor for Netflix, not just to make sure that only paying customers have access to shows, but also to increase the possible revenue Netflix could make from every potential customer. How, you may ask? By being able to tailor shows based on specific countries to the user's interest, but also offer purchasing power parity to make sure the pricing is adjusted per income level per country. The list goes on and on, and the power of authorization keeps growing with time. But let's take a step back and explain the difference between authentication and authorization. Authentication is the process of verifying a user's identity. This is typically done by requiring the user to provide some kind of credentials, such as a username and a password, a fingerprint or a facial recognition scan in order to confirm their identity. On the other hand, we have authorization, which is not to be confused with authentication, even though they sound quite similar. Authorization is the process of granting or denying access to resources based on a user's identity and the permissions that have been assigned to them. This is typically done by comparing the user's credentials against a set of rules or policies to determine what they are allowed to access and what they are not allowed to access. Writing authorization policies can get very tricky. The most common way to create a policy is by using OPA, which stands for the Open Policy Agent. OPA is an open source, general purpose policy engine that unifies policy enforcement across the stack. OPA provides a high level declarative language that lets you specify policy as code and simple APIs to offload decision making from your software. You can use OPA to enforce policies in microservices like Kubernetes, CI CD pipelines, API gateways, and more. The issue with OPA is that the policies have to be written in Rego code a high-level language that was purpose-built for expressing policies over complex hierarchical data structures. This is all great and everyone can learn to use this, but you don't want only a small chunk of people to be able to manage policies within your team, nor have the requirement to learn Rego. And this was the problem Netflix tried to solve. They needed the policy creation process to be simplified and therefore provide a smaller learning barrier to the ones that want to manage policies. So they actually came up with a solution to the first problem. Netflix decided to build a UI on top of the OPA language, abstract away from the complexity and allow users to manage complex policies via the UI. That solved the issue, but then another problem has become prominent. Once the policy was in place, did they actually capture the intent of that policy? They knew in plain English what they wanted to achieve with the policy that they proceeded to define in the UI, but they didn't know if it would actually perform and they had to think of another solution. Netflix ended up building unit testing mechanisms for their UI. Essentially, it was, do you want this policy to be in the system? Well, you had to finish writing the policy, then you had to write tests for it, and the test should pass. And voila, that was the solution that Netflix offered. 
This is something that worked for Netflix, and it granted them a solution built upon open source that allowed them to bake an authorization much faster than writing their own homebrew authorization. Unfortunately, Netflix kept this for themselves internally and never exposed it to the wider audience. So you may ask, is there a company that did something similar? Something that is available to everyone? Well, yes, there is. Permit.io is a low-code application-level authorization solution. But apart from their SaaS offering, they also have a popular open-source project called Opal. Now, Opal stands for Open Policy Administration Layer. Essentially, what Permit did with Opal is that they have taken OPA, the Open Policy Engine, wrapped it in a layer that responds to live policy and data changes, updating all your data sources, and bringing Open Policy up to the speed needed by live applications. As you push updates to your application stores, like Git, your databases, your SaaS services, Opal will make sure your services are always in sync with the authorization data and policy they need it. In fact, the Netflix high-level architecture, which inspired Opal, is made up of the aggregator, the distributor, and the updater. By using this inspired approach, it really allowed Opal to be aware of data coming from different sources, and thus the management and updating of relevant data in real time. The greatest thing about this is that not only it offers so much power to companies wanting to use Opal because of its real-time, stateless and extensible architecture, but also because it's free and available to everyone as a public project. It's what the power of open source really shows. And how powerful is open source? How often do you see it used by companies? Well, as an example, Opal is used by companies like Tesla, Cisco, uh, Palo Alto Networks, Walmart, to name a few. The list is very long. The other great thing is that open source is very transparent and it's built along with the community for the community. You can contribute, you can look into the nooks and crannies of what has been programmed and how it works, and there is nothing that is hidden from you. So I encourage you all to always consider exploring open source solutions. You never know what gem you might find. In the same way, you might look into Opal and find Permit, which extends on top of OPA and Opal, and introduces a beautiful no-code dashboard and a low-code implementation for adding authorization into your project. Sometimes things that are complex can suddenly become very, very simple. So if you are looking for an authorization solution, why not give Opal a try? And you can find that on GitHub.